a little vodka badge <laughs> bottling here, so be Aye. careful with the okay. hose here. I will take you to the back where the process starts. Um, we are in many trade magazines that nobody really reads, <laughs> but we are the only fruit brandy distillery in the state of Florida. Usually these type of uh, distilleries are on the west coast or upstate New York, closer to fruit farms, so it makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. But we do it in small batches because uh, my grandfather did it in Hungary, so I know oh, the process. That's awesome. so, so we do it in uh, small batches. We don't have any machinery to process the fruit, so we do it old school. We hand wash everything. Hand wash. So to make one batch of fruit brandy, it's minimum 2,000 pounds of fresh fruit that we hand wash here. So basically every single fruit is we touch. Um, yeah. The plums has big pits, so we have to cut it out. So it takes us a long time, but the good part is sometimes you find imperfections, something that you don't like on the fruit, so we don't use those. So it yeah. doesn't affect the flavor profile. Yeah. Once everything is washed, um, there's this big industrial grinder, uh, smoothie maker I call it. <laughs> so we put all the fruit through here. We use the skin of the fruit, that's why we wash it. Yeah. Except the bananas, I peel those. And then goes through here. When it comes out, it's almost liquid. Um, and then this is my pump. So from here, goes straight to one of the fermentation. Things. Okay. And excuse all the bottles, but as you said earlier, it's yeah. really hard to get them. And I found it. I you gotta take them in bulk. Yeah, take it in bulk, and we are running out of space now. Yeah. So boxes and bottles now. Uh, so here are our fermentation tanks. All the equipment actually came from Hungary, specifically made for fruit brandies, but this is what I use for my rum, um, these fermentation tanks. Yeah. If it's fruit, it um, takes 2,000 pounds to fill it up. We ferment for two weeks at really cold temperature. Since it's Florida, the mash could go bad really quickly. So we have to keep it really cold. So all these tanks are temperature controlled. Mm -hmm. There's an engine on top, so during fermentation or mash is constantly stirred. Um, once we pitch the yeast, close the top. I don't open it for two weeks, but every day have to check for pH and sugar level, and that's why I have these little valves to take samples daily. Yeah. Uh, the tanks are also connected to the internet, so everything is also monitored oh, cool. online. So you know like the temperature, you know, all that stuff, mm -hmm. all those parameters? Yeah. And then if the fermentation is done, we attach the hose to the bottom and then pump it to the still because here the yeast eats the natural sugar of the fruit to mm -hmm. create the alcohol. So create the alcohol here and yeah. then the still, I remove it. Uh, if it's rum, I don't ferment for two weeks, a little bit higher temperature, yeah. only for a week. Okay. Um, you guys have any questions on the fermentation process? No. no. We're, we're quite uh, familiar with the oh, okay. distilling process. We oh. just wanted to hear you okay. and, and your process, okay. the way you do it here. So very cool. So you brought these all from, from Hungary. Hungary. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And you can distill pretty much anything you want with these, right? I'm doing uh, whiskey. So here I add the barley, add water. And then this machine warms it up so the sugar from the barley is extracted to the w water, creating a barley mash. And then the same machine can cool or mash down the same day. So from here I'm able to put it to the fermentation oh, tank. Okay. Cool. So this is for whiskey making process. So you haven't had whiskey yet? I do have. You oh, haven't you tried it yet. Oh, okay. So yeah, have we'll one. have to try that for okay. sure too. And then these two machines are like the fermentation tanks, but if you fill it, it's really, really thick. You don't know if <gasps> carbonation, so Holy crap. ready to drink cocktails in these. Oh, oh my gosh. And how do you plan on, so like you plan on bottling them? Can them. Can them, okay. Mm -hmm. wow. That's genius, because that's a new fad everybody's going through. Yes. They're ready to make cocktails. Yeah, sometime this year, I don't know when. Very yet. cool. That's awesome. So you got a lot of ideas and a lot of things coming down the pipeline, huh? Yeah, just not enough time. Yeah. yeah.
Uh, I'm so impressed. Yeah. I, I just have Very to keep on saying that. That's so cool. Very cool. And this is, uh, just be careful. Yeah. So they are bottling right now. But this is our still. It's a hybrid still, like pot still, mm -hmm. with a reflux column, also yeah. made in Hungary. Uh, specifically for food brandies, where we can use it for uh, rum, uh, gin. Yeah, for everything. Uh, fully automated, so everything is computerized also. Just turning the lights on, as you can see inside. Um, it's a steam one, so we're heating it or mash with steam which is energy efficient, heats up quickly and doesn't burn the mash to the side of the pot to That's create awesome. off flavors. Yeah. And as you're heating it, the alcohol starts evaporating, the vapor rises. There's a pipe here, so it goes through here and then goes up on the reflux column. Uh, on the top, we cool the vapor down so it becomes liquid and it slowly drips back to the mash. Our recipes are really long. When we distill, it's 12, 13 hours. Okay. So we run it through the reflux column uh, many times okay. to purify it. Yeah. Uh, there are different plates that we can adjust for different flavors. Yeah. And then eventually the purest vapor escapes, goes through the vapor pipe, and then condenses down back to liquid and slowly drips up here. Uh, we separate the heads and the tail, only the hearts are collected. And then we're collecting these stainless steel tanks. If it's brandy, it stays in it between three to seven months. Wow. In those collection tanks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have back storage. We have more barrels there. Yeah. Uh, we're aging mango brandy, grape. Wow. Uh, some gin, pear brandy, and rum. Yeah, I can in see the, the pictures of the pear right here. Yeah. Um, before we bottle, everything is filtered, proofed down. Uh, you can see everything is hand bottled yeah, here. Right there, yeah. uh, just fill that tank up with the already filtered, proofed down spirits. And then my dad is bottling a small batch of vodka. And then the labeling machine is here. Can you show us? <laughs> This is the entire crew, by the way. And then the back label is put on by hand. Um, and then we also melt a plastic seal on it for more security. And then each batch is numbered, too. Last night we had a bottling party, so uh, we had people do bottling the product. Oh, well, that's a cool, very cool. Where did cool. you advertise that? Um, you did it. A group came to me. They wanted okay. to do like an activity. To do. Oh. Okay, that's cool. It was like a private. Nice. Well, that's such a good idea, actually. Rum. Rum. <laughs> it is. So um, we have three rums. Uh, we make our silver rum from Florida molasses. Okay. Uh, last year we got bronze at the American Distilling Institute. Uh, we only use molasses. There's no additional sugar, nothing added. And then we use a yeast from the Caribbean that brings out caramel and banana notes oh, nice. uh, from the molasses. So this is just our silver rum. People say it's really smooth. Okay, that is smooth. Yeah. I think that's probably one of the smoothest silver rums I've had. But it has like taste to it. Yeah, it tastes like molasses. Yeah, we follow the same principle what we do with our brandy. Nothing is added, no flavoring, wow, no rum essence, nothing, no sugar, it's just 100% molasses. Yeah, you could definitely smell the molasses, but the flavoring, it. Whatever so you're smooth. using, whatever yeast you're using, I could tell like it gives it like a tropical finish, mm -hmm. a little bit of smokiness too. Caramelly. I think it's just the molasses, really. No, but to the taste, to the palate. <clears throat> no hog though. A little. Tiny. I like the smokiness though. There's a to me there's a, li a little bit smoky on the top on the back. I don't get the smokiness. I don't know if it's like the banana or tropical flavors. Same rum. 
We're adding to a uh, brand new heavy toast American oak. Aged that for two years. Uh, I only made one barrel just to try it out. Yeah. So I lost 20% yeah. of the operator. Yeah. Uh, Angel share. Angel share. <laughs> yeah, and Devil's got in two years, so 20% we lost in the South Florida heat too. Yeah. So that's just straight out of the barrel. Again, I didn't do anything with it. There's no coloring added, no, no flavoring, no sugar. Um, I bottled that at 84 proof, so that's the color. Um, all that caramel that you tasted here turn into chocolate notes here. Oh wow, with the oak I guess. Yes. So you only did one barrel of this? Yes, That's it's a, a really... It's a shame. I'm making more, but... <laughs> I'm years, making so. more because it um, became my dad's favorite, so... Oh shoot, dad's flavor, uh, favorite. So no flavors, no extracts, no artificial coloring. Nothing straight out of the barrel. Um, I did it how the bourbon is made, two years. Uh, the proof, the proof we bottled, I mean the barrel with. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, you like it. I love it. That's very good. It is. It's so complex for just two years. Because this one is already complex. so unique. Yeah. And now you're adding the oak. Yeah, it's, we use molasses from Florida, aged that here in Florida. So called it. I think I called it Florida Barrel Age. Yeah, that's it's amazing. Aged, aged here in South Florida. And this is so unique. So unique. It's probably the smoothest silver rum I've had. I am not a big fan of silver rum. Like, I'll, I'll use it to mix mojitos, and that's mm -hmm. about it. That's, we have it on the menu. But this, you could drink neat yeah. or on ice. Because there's. You, the molasses flavors. is there. But the molasses, but there's something else. I, I think it's the yeast that you're using from the Caribbean. Because I do get a tropical finish on it, mm -hmm. which you typically don't get with a silver rum. Maybe, maybe now that it's sitting on my palate for a little bit, I'll get a little bit of chocolate. I, I get cinnamon. A little bit of cinnamon. It's very good. Yeah, that's delicious. I will say, if there's a rum, that's close to whiskey. You aged this in, in, in oak? Yeah, yeah, in oak. Brand new. Yeah. For two years. Yeah, that whiskey flavor comes through. I only time. meant to age it for a year, but because of the pandemic, it yeah. ended up two years. Yeah. But it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's very good. That's delicious. Super good. And then the third rum we have it's new, uh, we just released it uh, two weeks ago, <laughs> you know, um, it's a sour cherry spice rum. I'm so excited for um, this. I did some research and I couldn't find any sour cherry spice rum, so no. if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but no, to my not. knowledge I'm the only yeah. on the market, uh, we use real sour cherries. Yeah. Uh, none of our products are sweet, we don't use sugar, but I think this is has a touch of sweetness naturally from the sour cherries the okay. sugar that's in it so yeah. it's a little bit so then did you use bit. this one no or what did you do it's you use the this combination one? of the two okay there's um plus the age, sour cherry. age rum part of it yes. okay and yeah, i love cherries it smells like spicy oh, but not this. maybe like cardamom uh, don't you're not gonna don't, don't worry, just leave it to me, I'll take it. You don't need that. There are others. <laughs> it's not just sour cherry, there are a lot of others, like that cinnamon, that orange, is so unique. other spices in too. flavor. <laughs> Holy crap. And you get the spices, like you get like uh, like cloves. Yes. You get that right up front. But it is sweet. It is sweet. It kind of tastes like those drums that are aged in like porter or sherry cast. Yeah. Without being aged in that. But to me, better because I love the spiciness of it. And and you can I tell it's a sour. Them. You can taste the sour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cherry. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, a little sour. Yeah. Little yeah. Sweet. yeah. And then a little spicy. It's like 
it's everything. All, everything is in there. All the yeah. components are in there. It's very good. We make a old fashioned with this and it became pretty popular. Yeah. What, what, what made you use sour cherry? I like to do things that nobody does. Okay. So I do I some research that. and if I don't see it, I want to make it. Yeah. And did you make it like, was your first batch like something you. No, it, no. Took, it took a while, right? To <laughs> no, get it right, I'm, to dial it in? I'm really patient, so um, yeah, it took us a long time. Almost a year. That's so to unique. Figure it out. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's there's nothing in the country that tastes like this. I don't know about outside of the US. The only rum that tastes like cherry and that's sour cherry, I don't know if you've tried, um, what's that African rum with the Madagascar bean? That oh. one tastes like straight up cherry. I don't know what you're talking and about. And licorice. The star, is it star? Yeah, star. Star. Star rum. It's a white rum. The bottle is this red thing like this. I think they changed their bottle, by the way. I don't know if it looks like that. Oh, well, the one we have is. That's the closest but, cherry rum. But not like this. But they don't put, I don't I don't think they put cherries in it. I just think they've aged it in some kind of cast. Because mm -hmm. it's from Madagascar. So it's not like here, here you're forced to use oak barrels. Right? Well, you are not forced unless you do bourbon. Oh. I mean, you can use cherry. You can oh, use I didn't wine. know. Because yeah. remember the guy from Fiesta Key said, by law, you have to use oak barrels for rums. No, for whiskey. For oh, I bourbon. thought it was for rums no, too. No, for bourbon. Oh, you can use whatever barrel you want for. Oh, that's as awesome. As far as I know, I'm not a distiller though. This is so good. Something different. But it's so good. That cherry, man. Yeah. That's why I was excited Nothing when I saw the cherry. Like I was like, I wonder, how, like, how it tastes, but. Nothing quite like it. It's like a good mix of a little bit of everything. But congrats, I love this. This is amazing. Like the world needs to come and try this. <laughs> Seriously.